Gattaca on display, so we might see the Raylan. Another day of IAE had come, and in the showroom this time with a collection of manufacturers producing human operable versions of alien vessels. And I thought I would change up the format we've been using in these IAE videos for this one, as a few months back we actually held an alien ship night for patrons, in which I got to both see most of the alien ships up close and even fly many of them. So we'll be showing the ships not only on display but also in use. The alien ships of Star Citizen are some interesting designs indeed, starting with the Banu Defender. It is a cool looking ship. It looks like something, and I mean this in a, as much as something can be a positive about these films. You know, don't bite my head off. It looks like something from the Star Wars prequels, design wise, yeah, like, you it know? Does. Yeah, no, I think But in a good way. Yeah. Let's go step up inside it. For the viewers at home. Inside, by the way, it goes all HR Giga. The Banu Defender, as its name suggests, is a Banu ship. And some weeks earlier, Phoenix 83 would answer some of my questions Shit, about kind of it. You yeah, move. I'm gonna chase it down and see if it comes to a stop. It looks like it's slowing down. Bound to find a very oh. alien. Very Giga. Like, real Giga. So, within the Banu Defender here then, like, I can look over, right? And I can see your canopy, and I can see you in the canopy there, which is really cool. What do the two... Is one of... Is it just like an old... Like a backup pilot seat? No, or... a Banu ship. Not a human version, but a Banu version of the ship. Uh, only on the co pilot and the pilot is only does the piloting, and that actually has to do with Banyu culture that they actually divide their culture into the specialties who are trained by Sully. So, someone who's a gunner only specializes in gunning, someone who is a pilot only specializes in piloting. So, the Banyu uh, defender reflects that and that it has a pilot and a gunner, and even though it's not actually a turret, the only person who's Using and controlling the gimbals would be the Banyu pilot. When they wow. made the human version, they re -enabled, they re enabled it for the pilot as well. I've forgotten how good the the, the Banyu jump effect is, the quantum effect is, because damn, that was so beautiful. After a stopover in Port Olisar, we were heading out to see the Defender in combat. We'd switched ships though, and this one was silver, which I have to admit, I do much prefer. Here we go. What size weapons do you have on this thing? Four size threes right now. Nice, sure can. And it was interesting in whether the co-pilot could manage any systems on the ship. Yeah. Let's see, some shields can not be. Wait, can they be adjusted? Because they are. They are. No, shields cannot be adjusted, but. Can power be adjusted? Let's find out. They're very really easy to fly, the, uh, the Defender. The Defender makes for a nimble fighter with a decent amount of firepower, the same as the Sabre, which is a ship I have a lot of love for, and I'm told that it has an insanely large quantum fuel tank as well. Oops. Yo, that was a big hit. That was a big hit. <laughs> we were not alone in this fight, but the Defender was handling its role in taking down this hammerhead exceptionally well. We were so close to finishing this fight. Good fighting. Nice. Good maneuvering. But then some telltale signs would creep through. Weapons are not recharging. Just 30 Cade. Oh yeah, look, I think it looks like I am in the midst of 30 yeah. Cade. So on this occasion we didn't get the kill, but the defender had demonstrated its combat prowess nonetheless. It is not an aesthetic I am enamored to, but a very capable ship. Also adorning the hall here with some of the Vandal ships, such as the light fighter, the Blade, which also shows a very Giga-esque design style, and the Glaive, which right now has a more scrapyard punk style to its construction, though I am told there is an expected redesign in the works to bring it more in line with the style of the Blade. And again, I get to play with them a little on our Patreon excursion. I'm just, I'm just getting some screenshots. And silhouetted against the nebula. Ooh. Okay, here we go, so jump into Daymar. 
yeah okay so that does look basically yeah identical to the human jump the glaive looks really really cool wow wow it's like yeah. <laughs> I can't lie, I quite like the look of that one. It's got a bubble cockpit. What's the visibility like with those um, beams, Wi Fi? Oh, it's very good. Do you want to hop in? Yeah, okay, yeah, sure, yeah, thank you. Yeah, you lay, you lay down on your belly. <laughs> wow. Very strange. Go ahead and take off and I'll grab another one. Wow. And one ship that was not on display at IAE, but I had seen when one of our patrons brought it along, was the very asymmetrical Vandal Scythe. And I'm also told that in future the blade-like sections of these ships are intended to be usable as effective ramming weapons, as the Vandal as a species have something of an obsession with bladed weapons. Naturally, I wanted to take the glaive out for some combat. I'm going to come and help you there, Phoenix. Alrighty. As All best right. I can, anyway, you know. Oh, you're good. I, I'm in a Vandal Raider. I see a hammerhead. I just see a nice defensive target. <laughs> well, look, it's good. I can, I can see why people don't like it. It's very hard to tell when people like that. Shit. And I can't see the SPF. Yeah, there we go. One down. And in a Vandal Raider, everybody looks like a bad guy. <laughs> 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 All right, first, first baddie down. Yeah, hurricane as well, yeah. Victim. Now I am not a great dogfighter, so I'm sure a more proficient pilot could take down this hurricane much faster in this ship. But I enjoyed flying it very much, and the weapons it possessed were very interesting energy weapons that kind of felt like ballistics is how I would describe them. I love that skit. The centerpiece of the IAE showroom on this day was the Asperia Prowler, a very unique dropship from the bird person to Varin race. And it was a ship that already held some interest to me as a potential dropship for us in the raccoons. And like another famous Tavarin ship, this also features the view screen instead of a canopy, which has a pretty cool effect when shut off. Um, yeah, the back of that opened up. Oh, yeah. oh, oh hello. Wow, okay, that's interesting. What? <laughs> Wow, okay, I'm loving this interior. This is crazy. What the hell? These this is amazing. And these all open up. So oh my god. Everybody's got an individual drop. These are air shields. That, so they hold in the air. That's one of the things that the Baron had. The humans actually got their air shield technology from the Baron. So that's what, the, uh, that's what this guy can see, like the kind of emitter type effect, yeah. Uh, there is an upper deck. So both of these <laughs> what? are identical. <laughs> Uh, so the upper deck is technically the pilot deck, uh, yeah. and this is technically the gunner station, but it can be flown from both seats. This, oh, co-pilot yeah, but you can okay. pilot it, so if you sit in it, you can pilot it. They both look identical when you sit in Where is the main pilot seat then? Up here. It's actually a ladder. Oh, really okay, cool. Wow. Ladder. This is much more alien looking than, than most of the other stuff I've seen. Wow. So you notice the bracing in the structure on the top? They said that because the Tavaran were like a pre-race or an arboreal race, that they feel comfortable in an environment that looks like it has a lot of ranching. And that's why they did, it was designed that way. This interior is supposedly comfort to, comforting to it. Here we go, pilot seat. Sit in a traditional seat this time. Actually, actually, I think he's still sticking his head up through the, the hole. I found my yeah. way around. <laughs> it's amazing. It's powered off and powered back on to see the, uh, okay. the invisible uh, cockpit. Power is going down. Yeah, wow. it's like in the uh, in the Talon, right? Yeah, that, that's so cool. And like the Banner Defender, a very unique quantum jump effect. Oh my god. <laughs> oh wow, probably looks real cool when it's in a quantum jump. Damn, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm, this ship is really growing on me, I have to admit. 
<laughs> I am not going to go into the Prowler as the combat vessel here, as we did a more thorough trial of it for use with the raccoons, and we'll delve into it there. But it has some interesting and useful features like the side oriented drop doors that make it an interesting dropship option. The ladder, right? The ladder on this ship, this is Spirit Ladder, is a very unusual design. It looks really cool. It's very unusual. Now, the Tavarian designs continued with the Asperia Talon and the Talon Shrike, two very capable like fighters that, as I understand it, were kind of the meta ship back in 3.13. I didn't fly them specifically on our Patreon night, and the Tavarian aesthetic isn't particularly appealing to me, but by reputation anyway, these are very effective combat ships. Then we move on to a very strange one, the Cartual. A ship that looks a bit of a mess when landed, but unfolds to become an almost Thargoid like shape after takeoff. Let me ask you a question about the, the, the Cartual, okay? So, the Cartual, which alien species is it a product of? It's the Shi'an. Are they the. Are they, do they also make like the Banu Defender and the Banu? No, they're the. They're the they're oh, okay, right. So, the Banu are their own thing, like, yeah. And. <laughs> The Xi'an are like, are they the turtle people or is that Banu? Yeah, that's, that's right. They're the ones that look the like turtles. Turtle. Okay. Yeah, turtle is the quantum effect the same? Uh, does it look like any of the other quantum effects or is it totally unique right. again? It's got, it's totally unique. unique. Feel free to hop in. Yeah, take it. Okay. okay. Okay, here we go. The Cartoile is a ship I had never flown myself, but had seen it in combat many times and how blisteringly effective it can be in a fight, as it was Morty's favourite ship back when we started playing Star Citizen. Systems on. Okay, I better take off quickly so that I don't get pounded. Ooh, okay, the engine sounds. The engine sounds are really cool, wow. Gear up. Oh my god, okay, do you know what it reminds me of? Right? And um, I don't know if you guys will get this or not. What it reminds me of is the FDL sounds in Elite Dangerous, the kind of third lance engine. Wow! Still, its unique quantum jump effect would be entirely new to me and I was eager to see what it looked like. And, okay, this one's interesting. This effect is, oh wow, it's very pretty in external view. Like the ship and the, the effect, ooh. Below the main hall, we could see the Apoa Nox, the Cartoir manufacturer's answer to the Drake Dragonfly. This smaller Gravlev bike is faster than a Dragonfly, but only seats one person. And I was interested in seeing what else Alien Manufacturers Diverse had to offer, but upon looking at the expo map, there was very little else to see. All that remained was the hollow viewer room, where upcoming alien ships could be previewed. The Gatak Raylan was first, a very unique looking cargo ship that like the Agar Raft carries its cargo externally. I do not know a lot about this ship but I really do like the design. And the final segment of the display was the Banu Merchantman a truly gargantuan Banu vessel that aims to not only serve as a huge capacity cargo ship but also has onboard shopping capability in the form of a marketplace. This isn't a ship of interest to me personally but I know a lot of people are eagerly waiting and very excited for this ship. The alien ship designs of Star Citizen are certainly very interesting. Most, as I understand it at least, are replica of the actual alien versions built for humans to be able to operate, which in and of itself is a pretty neat detail. I don't think any of these ships entice me enough to actually fly them on a regular basis, but they're very cool to see and fly in person. There would be more still to come from my AE, and we'd even revisit an older adventure while here on Microtech, and I look forward to bringing it to you over the holiday season. I'd like to thank all of you for watching and all of our amazing patrons who you can see on screen right now. Patron support is what allows me the time it takes to edit these videos together and I am very grateful to all of you for your support. In this video I would especially like to thank Trix and Amuji who both recently became supporters of the channel over on Patreon. Thank you both for your very generous support guys. Backers like you are what make these videos possible. If you are thinking of starting Star Citizen yourself, use the referral code in the description below when signing up to gain an extra 5,000 credits in-game. We'll be back with some more adventures very soon.